I don't know, that owl just smacked me in the face. Look at the library. Branching out. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. We are answering gardeners' questions again today. We're here to see Swati. Swati, who has a patio garden, which I'm very excited to see. Yeah, people are gardening in the most unusual spaces all over South Jersey. Yeah, it's awesome. You ready? Yeah, let's all go. Right. So how long have you been gardening in this space? Uh, the, I started uh, this year itself, did some winter sowing, and then this is the first season. How did you decide what to plant? Uh, so basically the vegetables that we use on a regular basis, those, are, those were the vegetables that I went for for the first time. So yeah. smart. You'd be surprised how many people don't do that and they end up growing things out of curiosity that they don't yeah. want to eat. So yeah. I always say, what are you <laughs> yeah. putting in the grocery cart the mm -hmm. most? Mm -hmm. That's what you should grow. And then uh, all these seeds I got from the Cherry Hill Public Library, the seed program that they have. You can drop all your seeds off at the end of the year that you're not using and then someone else, mm -hmm. and you can wow. get different ones or someone else can come mm -hmm. and try gardening for wow. the first time. That's really fantastic. Look at the library, branching out. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the challenges that you're facing that we can help you with today? Yeah. Uh, so the first challenge is because it's a small space, how to rotate crops, which plants to be should be planted here where we get most of the sun and there where there is more shade. I have some recommendations for you right off the bat. <clears throat> you did a great job, your first try. Everything looks really good. It looks like you've got some cabbage moss like everybody else and we just did a video on that the other day. What is happening to your raspberry? <laughs> but I think sun and shade is a big issue for your success here. So you're telling me that you get shade here in the morning and then it gets sunny in the afternoon, but that you get sun most of the day over here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So I think this is actually perfect for your shade garden. Your beets, all your brassicas, lettuce, spinach, all those plants will really thrive not getting that intense full hot sun. Mm -hmm. So you can absolutely leave them where they are. But I'm looking at your tomatoes and your peppers and your herbs and I just know as the season goes on, they're not gonna thrive the way they could if they had like a full day of direct sunlight. So if this were me, Marianne, I would dig up these tomatoes and put them in a big pot mm -hmm. and put yes. them right over there where I know you're gonna get blazing hot sun mm -hmm. and take, I would take your supports. Mm -hmm. I would dig these little peppers up that you have right here. Mm -hmm. Um, you can plant peppers pretty close together, but this is really close because they're going to get about this big. And so I would also put those in a pot, get a big pot and you could probably put all three of them in there. And I would also move some of your, your mint. And if you've got other herbs like basil really likes that hot full sun, they can easily go in the bottom of the pot right around the tomatoes so that you're not having to build a whole bunch of different beds over here. That yellow flower is so pretty. It looks fake. It, it is, is fake. The yellow. Yes. And the red too. Yeah. Well, I wanted the garden to be more colorful and at the same time attract some bees. That doesn't always work. Bees are not easily fooled. But in her case here, she's got these pale lilies that are yeah. so pretty, but they're not that bright, intense color that bees yeah. like. So by sticking those in there, she's probably attracted and mm -hmm. psyched out a few bees who show up and they're like, all right, well, I guess I'll pollinate what's here. <laughs> wow. This is, you have made this garden you yeah it's really pretty. you know it is it's Thank so pretty so it's like your little corner paradise awesome all right i am glad tony was able to answer your questions and i was here to listen we are now off to laura's laura this is serious garden back here this is not playing it's incredible it's pretty and there's just so much. How did you put this all together? I'm a pandemic gardener. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I started <laughs> with garden on the deck um, in containers and with confidence from following Tony's page. I just said, I can do that. And it kind of moved off of the deck. Last year we had less stuff. This year, we added more beds. It makes me so happy, Laura. I love it. You're growing some really unusual things that I don't see most home gardeners growing, which is very exciting. Is this an amaranth over there? Yes. Oh, spectacular. Am amaranth? It's an ancient grain like quinoa. 
and you, it grows beautifully and you harvest the seeds and cook them up like rice. I mean, my peas are kind of coming to an end, yeah. but I still have these last ones that I need to They look pick. great. And these um, are all edible too. Like if you make a salad, all yes. of this is edible. You can throw all the pretty pea shoots on pasta or salads. My oh, mouth is watering just looking at them. They look so good. Can I pick one? Yes, absolutely. Um, all right, so you said we can eat these, right? Yeah, you can eat the whole pot. Can I pick two? You okay. can pick as many as you like. Um, I don't know, that Al just smacked me in the face. I think he's like, these aren't your peas. Okay. All right. So what, did you just take a bite? I did, but you can also open it up and they're beautiful yeah. peas. Look at that. Wow. Okay, but did you, oh wait, you didn't, okay, did you so eat I, the outside? I eat the outside earlier in the spring when it's more tender. Yeah, so I it's know. a little woody right now and fibrous, so I'm just gonna eat the peas. The inside Look, is delicious. Oh, there. yummy. Oh yeah, these are good. Yeah. These are really good. I just need some like pasta. <laughs> be really good. And now we can throw this right on her compost pile. Yep. The dress form, what is that? It's beautiful. I've seen a lot of fun garden sculptures. That takes the cake. I put vining varieties of our nasturtiums, um, the clematis, there's some morning glory in there, just so that it could kind of creep up yeah. our dress form and fill her out. And then we have lights at the top. Will it grow more? It, yeah, it's yeah. it's filling in. Um, so once it gets to here, I will be pruning it and fluffing it. Yeah. And um, you know, I can wrap things around so they can start to grow back down if they need to or, or whatever, but. So fun. Love it. Yeah. And Love it. I do have some questions on these bugs that I've never seen before. It looks like we've definitely got a crop of potatoes here. We do. My favorite. So you've got all these little red beetles on here. All over. They are. So this one has yeah. three. Yeah. Like really close together. So I didn't recognize these when we first walked up. I asked you, um, is it Colorado potato beetle? And I got over here and these don't look like Colorado potato beetle, but I have never seen the nymphs before. And that's what these are. So these are babies who are going to grow into full grown Colorado potato beetles, which will be yellow and black. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of these. And so these guys don't fly away easily. They're easy to catch, they're easy to see, and they're big. So the recommendation is to come and just pick these off. Uh, you can use gloves. Oh, yeah, I guess it's and uh, guess what? Use a water bottle. I was gonna say, I'll probably put some under it and just hit it on there. Use a water bottle and put like a little inch of a rubbing alcohol or vinegar okay. in the bottom of it and just plop Drop them it. in. Okay. You can control potato beetles really well by picking them off and killing them because they will not rebuild their population quickly. If you're still seeing damage and you somehow feel like you can't keep up with them, there are some good options like spraying them off with the hose on its strongest setting. Okay. Sounds like that wouldn't do anything, but it really, if they end up disrupted in someplace else where there's no food and they don't have, they're not good flyers, okay. they're not gonna get back here. They're gonna die with lack of food. And this year, the insect pressure has been absolutely crazy. We've all been talking about it. I'm seeing insects I haven't seen before and I'm seeing more damage to my plants and especially seedlings that would come out and the entire seedling would just be gone. So um, this is this is climate change. So this is we don't have these long cold freezing cold winters with deep temps that are killing off all the larvae and the eggs in the soil. And so they are all hatching and all surviving because our climate is changing. Well I think yes. uh, I'm diligent enough to be fighting back. I, I'm, I'm okay with using netting and covers and... Yep. Well, I'm not okay with doing that though. I can't touch it with my hand. I am right there with you. <laughs> oh, you've got little babies here. Oh dear. Yeah, there. Oh, and now I have bug poop on me. Marianne's never gonna speak to me again. Oh my goodness. And I don't know, it just seems like they're right here. They are. They're As I walked around, I didn't really notice them. They're spreading oh, though. Oh, are they spreading? Yeah, okay. there's one right here. Well. Aside it. from the small red bugs, your garden is spectacular. spectacular. Thank you. S spectacular. It's really beautiful. I, you're, you're like goals for me. I'm trying. So thank you for having us out. Well, thank you for coming. Check back next Thursday for new episodes, and you have to get rid of that. You gotta get rid of that. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah.